love the sound so much. Oh my god, that's fast! It's quick! Whoa! So you jump out in the car having done this awesome launch control and the lights are there and the sounds and the speed and everything. And then you look at it and it's a giant blue soap bar with a bunch of stickers on it. What the heck is with this design? So guys, this is the second electric AMG that's been created. First one was the EQF53 that we tested out in LA and this follows it. It's obviously based on the EQE. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about both versions of this car EQE 53 and EQE 43. I'll peel back the skin, I'll show you what makes them tick. What have AMG actually changed, if anything? Have they just slapped a grill on it and a few wheels? Or have they actually gone in depth and made this a proper electric AMG? I'm also gonna talk about where they might take electric AMG in the future with another car that I've seen. And then we're gonna drive it and see, beyond the launch control, is this thing dynamic enough? What's the point when it looks so similar to the EQS? Is the EQS redundant? Let's answer all these questions today of the new EQE 53 and EQE 43. <laughs> so guys, the first all electric AMG that was made was actually an SLS, but in recent times, it was the EQS AMG, and that was the EQS 53 that we drove last. That was a 760 plus horsepower, big S-class electric car, essentially. Uh, zero to 60 was 3.4 seconds. Our EQE 53 today is actually not that far off those figures, though the horsepower is maybe less, the zero to 60, is actually quicker with the Dynamic Plus pack at 3.3 seconds, something that we're gonna check later. A lot of the rest of the car is quite similar. The weight is quite similar. The amount of space and luxury you get inside, the hyper screen, et cetera. A lot of what I'm wondering today is, does the EQE 53 make the EQS a little bit redundant? We'll have a look at that. First, we have to unpack what have AMG done to a standard EQE to make it an EQE 53. We'll get on to design later. First of all, let's talk about the actual components. In terms of the electric motors, just like we found in the EQS, we've got two permanently synchronous electric motors in the EQE. We've got one in the front and a larger one that sits in the rear. Both of these are modified by AMG from the standard EQE to have adaptive windings, laminations, higher currents, and a specific inverter. Our rear one is larger with a six phase design to coax more power out of it. There's lots of thermal management as well. The most notable one being a water lance within there, which helps manage uh, the extra heat because of course we're trying to get as much power out of this as consistently as possible. Now in terms of the differences between the 43 and the 53, our 43 rear motor is slightly smaller than the 53 one, but otherwise the hardware between the two of them, pretty similar. Yes, the 53 is coaxing more power, but a lot of that is thermal management. In essence, a lot of that sounds to me like we're using a lot of the hardware from the normal EQE and AMG have pushed things around and moved things and done a bit of thermal management in order to make this more powerful and coax more power. So not as mega AMG specific as perhaps things would read to be. All of that goes to a 90.6 kilowatt battery, so a smaller battery pack significantly actually versus the EQS, something more along the size of what you'd find in a Taycan, and that's the car that we're really gonna be comparing this today in terms of range and power and all that type of stuff. Now in terms of power, EQE 43 is your entry level, it's still all wheel drive, I'll get into that in a minute, but in terms of power, it gives you 476 brake horsepower, 858 newton meters of torque, and a 0 to 60 of 4.2 seconds, EQE 53, a little bit more complicated. The standard EQE 53 will give you 6 to 6 brake horsepower, 950 newton meters, and a 0 to 60 of 3.5. But if you get the AMG Dynamic Pack Plus, that is going to give you an overboost of 687 brake horsepower, 1000 newton meters, and a 0 to 60 of 3.3 seconds, provided though that you have over 70% of battery charge. If you don't, that reduces to the normal 3.5 second figure. So, you don't get all of that power all the time. In fact, when you're shifting between driving modes, say from Comfort all the way to Sport Plus, Sport Plus is the only mode where you get 100% power. In Sport, you get 90 and it reduces as you go into the more comfortable modes. Now, both of these cars are all wheel drive, so they have 
Formatic in the 43 and Formatic Plus in the 53. Normally Formatic Plus meant fully variable between the front and the rear, so you can have 100% power to the rear. In this case, both of them have that. And the Plus just means that this car is more dynamic. I don't get it. I don't understand that. I, don't, I can't explain it to you, but they're both fully variable, all-wheel drive systems running that power. And I guess that's all we need to know. Now the area where I think AMG probably done the most work is suspension. Here we have a four link front, multi-link rear. We've got AMG's adaptive ride control suspension. So it's very similar, okay, to the GT4 door and the EQS. We've got even the pressure limiting valves that allow for even more accurate dampening. We've got AMG specific wheel carriers. We've got AMG specific anti-roll bars, etc. So lots done here that is stripped straight out of like a big V8 AMG saloon as well. So that's all great. Braking system, of course, we've got the steel brakes or the carbon ceramics, as you find here, very big. But one feature that's specific to this is the iBooster, which marries the hydraulic braking system to recuperation. So that's something you're never really going to feel, but it's just working there in the background. Finally, we have rear wheel steering up to 3.6 degrees on the rear, which of course is going to help with a long car like this being more dynamic in shorter corners. The other interesting thing is the sound experience. So AMG have got actual hardware in here like a bass generator, a sound actuator, special speakers, etc., all to make the sound experience a bit more interesting. And we also got two different types of sound. One is what you get standard in the 43 and the 53, which is called authentic. And the other one is called performance, which you only get in the dynamic plus pack, which is the car we have today. But I'll show you all the sound as we go out. So that's your car. The final topic I wanna to talk about is weight because this is actually quite a heavy car. It's over 2.5 tons. It's only 100 kg away from the bigger EQS, which is basically an S-class size car. When you think this is E-class size, that's not a significant weight reduction. And it's well over 200 kg heavier than the equivalent Taycan. So it's a heavy car. I'm gonna to have to see what it's like when we go out on these roads. Um, that element alone is disappointing for me. Speaking of disappointment, we have to look at the design of this car. And I'm gonna have you come closer and we're gonna check it out together. So guys, design. What have they changed? In actual fact, barely anything, okay? We start with the front where this black panel has essentially just been given a few of the, the, the lines that you find on a, you know, a petrol AMG grill. And that's literally it. The shape is the same, bonnet is the same, the bumper is what you get on AMG line on the standard EQE as well. Nothing else is different there, okay? That does bother me because I'm expecting a little bit more from your first batch of EVs when you're trying to make a splash in the market, right? Then on the side, you see that one bow design that they keep talking about where, just look at the roof line, look how short our front bonnet is, um, the way that this just tapers off and there's, there's nothing there, which I'll talk to you more about in a second, but look at, there's no line here. There's nothing there. They haven't added any side sills as they would on AMGs normally. There's no arches added over here as well. The nicest part that we actually thought were the wheels. The multi-spoke wheels look lovely, especially in silver um, with the blue, and obviously the carbon ceramics hiding behind that. Those have been done well, considering that they're still aerodynamically optimized, but there's nothing else on the side. Zero, zilch, nothing to look at. And to be honest, it's the exact same story in the rear where compared to AMG line, nothing's changed apart from this spoiler, which is not enough to talk about. Yes, it's you know geometrically bigger, etc. No difference in diffuser. You know, it is what it is. Come close though, you can hear something. In Sport Plus mode, you can hear when the car is on. I like that. That's something I do like. That's a good thing. It's safe, because you know when the car is on. And an AMG, you should always know when an AMG is on. To really highlight though, the problem of the design with the EQE, AMG specifically, I'm gonna show you it versus another lovely blue car. So guys, the EQ design problem is best displayed here, where you've got the bar of soap with a load of AMG stickers on it versus one of the most beautiful wagons in the world. And that's the problem with the EQE. It just swoops off into nothingness. And I know it's for aerodynamics. Come and fight with me in the comments if you want. That's not a good enough excuse as far as I'm concerned. To me, what makes a great AMG and a great Mercedes these days is that shark nose that you have. Look at that, the way that points off. Like a shark, you've got the grill, you've got the air intakes, which yes, that has the air intakes, which are nice, but there's nothing here. There's nothing forceful. That could have just been a sticker. I could have applied those with a bit of decal. Whereas this, you know, this has got something. It's substantial. This looks gorgeous. Power domes, 
right? It's got something to it. These cuts, where are the cuts here? There's nothing there. The side sills, interesting. Nothing there. I'm losing my mind. Come around the rear. Now the rear, similar problem. You've got a one bar light. What you needed was two separate lights so you could break up the bulk of what's already a rounded rear end, right? But instead you've got a single bar light which makes it even more, you know, like, a rat, like an orange with, again, it's a bar of soap with stickers on it. I don't know how else to describe it. That's the only thing that changes, as I said on the AMG. The diffuser is so boring. Look at the diffuser here. Look how gorgeous this is, right? That is a gorgeous diffuser. Trims, proper aerodynamic shape. Yeah, of course you can't have exhaust on an EV, but the shape of it is glorious, you know? All of this is lovely. Why couldn't you have that rear end minus the exhaust on this? Answer me that. You cannot answer me that. It annoys me. And honestly, it would stop me personally from buying this car. In terms of design, to be fair, depending on how you spec the car, it can actually look quite different. We had a white one here as well that we actually quite like the look of with the satin black wheels, carbon ceramics, and the night package. Uh, there was a Magna Graphite gray one, which you think matte black would look good, but to me, again, it just looked like a, a nice smooth rock with some etching on it. It wasn't, it's not really doing anything for me, that. Now, I think these cars are all a little bit of a stopgap when it comes to AMG. I think they have to make them until they're ready to bring out something more interesting. Because Mercedes keep giving us the excuse that these cars look the way they do because of aerodynamics and you'll get better range. But as you'll see in a minute, the range this is quoting me is the exact same range I'm getting in my own personal Taycan Cross Turismo. So that story is not flying for me anymore. The car just looks ugly. Instead, I think in the future what they'll be making that will be a proper, proper AMG rather than a stopgap is something like this, which is the Vision AMG. It's a car that I actually filmed. Um, the video didn't come out for various reasons that aren't important, but you will hear me talking about this more in the future because I think it could be the right step for AMG when it comes to electric. First of all, it looks just a lot better. A lot of people have said that it looks like a, an AMG Taycan. I don't agree because I see a lot of AMG DNA in it, like the shark nose. Uh, the front reminds me of the Vision GT. The Panamericana grille is actually a proper AMG grille rather than the nonsense that we have on the EQE. Um, you've got nice strong shoulders, you know, some F1 influence. I think it could be a really good car. It could be the car that these ones are kind of hoping and wishing they were, but they aren't really in terms of design. Let's see what the future holds. For now, we have to uh, check this car out. There's some good stuff in the interior, actually, in terms of AMG specific things, in terms of the entire digital uh, experience. And then, as you saw with the launch control, well, the ride is actually quite interesting. So let's check it out. So inside EQE AMG, nice startup screen as you get in all the modern AMGs. I'm not gonna dive into all the EQE stuff. That's not relevant today. What's relevant is, the changes that AMG have made, and they are significant to make this AMG specific inside. And you can hear me keep saying this, the car is great when you're inside and you're not looking at the thing on the outside, um, but they have made some really good changes. So let's take a look at all of this from my perspective. So you get that cool AMG intro screen, which I really, really like. These type of software things, so important as far as I'm concerned because they endear you to the car, right? So we've got the massive hyperscreen, as you find in EQS. I've not been the biggest fan of it, but the point here is that AMG have actually customized all of the screens here for AMG use, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about. So let us begin. First of all, if I press the button one more time, see the lovely AMG logos come in here, which is fantastic, isn't it? That's really, really cool. So I'm happy with that. So immediately, cool things from the EQE still exist, like the temperature stuff that you can do, you know, the hot and cold, and then you get that in the ambient lighting, which is great. I appreciate all of that. But we want to talk about the AMG stuff. So first of all, they have improved the steering wheel. I've moaned so much about this, and AMG have now created a spoke that's like the previous one. They got rid of the thickness here, and they've created a really nice spoke. In fact, in EQE, it's the first car that you can get a carbon version of this that actually has a 12 o'clock marker as well. So really nice job. This is, it feels so much better in the hand. So I'm glad about that. I still don't like these. I still love the paddles. And these are the best ever with dynamic select. And that's what I want to talk about first, dynamic select. As you know, with the right hand side one, you guys can choose your driving modes very easily. It's quite satisfying, okay? And on the left hand side one, you have other settings what they've changed now is, if you go into dynamic select here, you can actually edit 
these into the order that you want them to be. For example, I like Sport Plus a lot, so I use it a lot. Let's put that first. This is barely used, I'm gonna put that at the end. I like comfort mode, so I'm gonna move that here. And now, when I come back here, and I move these around, you can see now Sport is the first one. I can't go any, I can't go any further left. Then I get comfort, individual, etc. So that modifies this as well, which is quite good. Secondly, you go into settings, and we can actually modify what we get in here. We can actually change what we get. So if I press this button up here, you see we get a plus. And now I can add stuff, for example, like drag race, which I'm always trying to find uh, in the menu system when doing a car review, which is not useful. You can add other bits and pieces, vehicle data, engine data, etc., etc., And then you can change where they appear, you know, within um, the buttons once again. So when I go back here, now, and I cycle through these, all those have been added, including the all-important drag race that we are going to use in a minute. So they've massively improved the user experience here, which I'm really happy about. Second thing we spoke about with the car was sound. So if we go into settings, and then you'll find sound experience here. Like I said, we have authentic, and then the special one you get with dynamic plus package of performance, right? That's what we're going to be using today, and I want to show you what happens when you turn the car on. So you get an actual on sound. I don't get that in my Taycan or in most other EVs, you don't have them. There's a humming sound coming from the car as well that tells me that the car is on. And when you turn it off again, a turning off sound, which is great. And this to me is very important, okay? You need to have a sound to tell you that the car is on because A, it's an emotional connection and B, it's just safer. The other sound design thing that I do appreciate is when you lock the car or open, let's get the car open first. When you lock the car, you get an affirmative like sound or we call it a groan. So going, oh. See, there you go again. I like that. I like the fact that you know that the car's off and it's giving you some kind of audible, you know, I'm off now. It's a good thing, right? The other thing that happens when you turn the car on and it's darker at night, you get a projection from our front headlights that shows the AMG logo and the Mercedes star. Again, a really, really nice touch. Next, we come on to driver zone, which once again, AMG do such a good job on this. We've got Super Sport, which is unique to EQE and the EQ cars, this design of it anyway. You even get track pace, which we'll try in a minute when we do the launch control. And of course, you get all the others that you see throughout on your normal Mercedes cars. These are the ones that we care about. And again, look, all AMG specific. In terms of our last screen, which is over there, that now has an AMG screensaver, which the EQS didn't have. And of course, you get other options within there as well, or you can turn it completely off. These, this hyperscreen to me has never looked like one entire screen, okay? I've never thought of it that way. It doesn't look that way. Um, and I think, personally, I prefer that S-Class type screen. But anyway, this is what we have. In terms of the rest of the interior, it's pretty much EQE with AMG leather, basically. You have got things like the Afaltabot crest there, AMG, you know, designed seats, but not really AMG bucket seats, lots of use of carbon, etc. This isn't what this car is really about. Let's go, take it for a run. Let's see what it does on that launch control as well, which I'm fascinated to see what happens and indeed the sound of the car. What is the dynamic plus sound like? Let's find out right now. Right, I've just set the ambient lighting to dynamic as well. So let's try this out. the sound so much. Oh my god, that's fast! Bloody hell, look at that. 3.1 seconds on launch control. That is very, very impressive. Um, this is a heavy car, remember. Not as powerful as, say, you know, Taycan Turbo, etc., but around about the same launch control figures. That's damn good. And I tell you, as you start planting speed on the road generally, it does feel that fast. It's so cool as well how you get the readout in front of you on the display with race flags. It's really well done. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. So sound was good, the ambient lighting uh, and all of that part of the acceleration, so fun to look at as well. 
Yeah, aim you've made that quite the emotional experience. I'm also appreciating the heads-up display, which is very, very clear. Right, this is all about AMG. We're gonna keep it in Sport Plus. That gives us the full power. Let's see what this car can do. Of course, we've got the rear wheel steering. The car is smaller than EQS, which should help it feel a bit better dynamically. Um, I'm liking the sound. Let's talk about sound first. That's nice. And with the ambient lighting, can you guys see that? When you slow down and then when you speed up, rear wheel steering, really useful, helps maneuver this larger car and then you yeah, have loads of power coming out of the exit there. Of course, 600 plus brake horsepower. There's no lacking power here. I suspect 43 might be, you know, more than enough for the road actually, especially considering that the formatting in there is fully variable as well. So you're not losing much. You discovered that the hardware is basically the same as well. So might be the one to go for because this seriously feels ridiculously quick. I mean, it's equivalent to, you know, Taycan Turbo, Turbo S Power, etc. And it, it does feel it. Slowing down sound is nice. Accelerating sound is brutal. Settle the car back down into comfort mode then, sitting in traffic, etc. The sound totally turns off. You can turn it back on with your sound button here, which I would always do. So I've got the moderate setting here. You can even put it in the more powerful setting, even in comfort mode, which is cool because a lot of us AMG customers do that with our petrol cars as well, don't we? So you have the option and you can do that immediately here. Most EVs don't do that. You have to go through the systems here if you don't like your electric sound. Whereas here, turn it on or turn it off. So that's great. Now, some of you might be wondering, bro, what's with the paddles? The paddles control your recuperation and it's almost like downshifting. For example, right now I'm in normal recuperation. I downshift, so to speak, and the car slows down just like you'd be using engine braking, which is quite clever. Then you can go back into your normal recuperation mode, come near a corner, downshift again, and you've got your higher recuperation mode and then return it to normal. So you get a bit of that familiarity that I often actually miss like in my Taycan. I wish that that car handled recuperation in the same way. I'm also quite surprised how agile this car is. The sound is so cool, but the agility of the car is actually deeply impressive. Um, the EQS actually really just felt like a, an S-Class, um, which is kind of exactly what you expect of it. Uh, this does feel more dynamic. Obviously, it's a smaller car. Yes, it's only 100 kg lighter, but I think it's just you know, it's on the line of not being too heavy and not being misconstrued with, say, an S-Class. I love driving in comfort mode with the moderate sound on. The suspension is actually better than, because I think it's too harsh in Sport Plus. Um, you still get some sound. The steering's a bit lighter. You get better range, obviously. This would be kind of your daily setup, I think. Oh, I like the ambient lighting bit. Um, it does get scary, though, coming into a corner. Carbon ceramics really helping in, you know, a, with the recuperation element, working with the iBooster, but just stopping this 2.5 tonne hulk of a car. And then the rear axle steering helping you turn. Um, keeps pretty flat. It's not gonna be the last word in handling, but it, you look at the car and it does not handle the way it looks, if that makes sense. It handles a lot better. Like, you wouldn't be massively disappointed coming out of a Taycan and then coming into this. Yes, Taycan definitely feels like a normal sports saloon, and this feels way heavier, but you can, you can have fun on twisty roads like this and not come out of the car disappointed. You'd only be disappointed once you lock the car and you look back and you see what you've just been driving. Speed is mega. I'm, I'm now totally convinced that a 43 would be more than enough because um, you'd still get the same dynamism that we have here. Steering, as always with AMG, it's such a good job with steering. The rigidity measures, the variable ratio steering, and the steering wheel change that they made here with the new spoke, so much better than what they had before. It really upped the experience for me, and I'm not, you know, I'm really enjoying this. This, this is decent. Eventually, though, physics comes into play and some corners like this one bloody hell becomes very very scary because the car's too heavy begins to understeer it all goes a bit wrong um, that's despite how good the formatic plus is in making this car feel more rear wheel drive you know physics is going to come into play you need a bespoke 
sports car EV platform for AMG. This is not that. This is a Mercedes-Benz luxury car platform being coaxed to try and do AMG things, which they've done a good job at, but it has its limitations. As far as the electric experience, you won't find a more emotional electric experience than this with the ambient lighting, with the sound. AMG have done the best job possible, I think, as they should be. I think they're the king when it comes to electric sound. The range I'm not that impressed with, you know, considering the fact they keep going on and on about why the cars look the way they do for aerodynamics, for range, but you're the same as a Taycan or an e-tron that look a thousand times better. Yeah, I, I just don't, you know, that's not working for me anymore. The range though, I still think it's decent. You know, I live with a Taycan that does 250 miles like this car would, um, less in the winter, and I'm perfectly happy with that. That's not a reason that I would say to you not to buy this car. The reason that I would end up myself with is that I just don't like the way it looks. If it looked like the Vision AMG, I would be there. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been useful for understanding where AMG are going with electric vehicles and where they currently stand. This EQE range is probably the best that they have to offer you right now, particularly the 43, I think, will be the pick of the bunch. It's gonna have all the emotional experience of this, probably a bit better range. It's gonna be more than fast enough on the road and it's gonna be a decent daily electric car. You'd be mad to get an EQS 53 over this because it does everything better. And this is the type of car that will replace your Tesla or any other electric car and you'd be very happy, but it will never replace your AMG. But I'm really looking forward to see what they do with a proper bespoke AMG electric car in the future. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this full review of the EQE AMG. If you have, as always, please do like and most of all, subscribe to RBR. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.